Hello all. So this is a Python for machine learning fourth lecture. So in this we will see numeric data types and character sets in Python. So the first application for computers begin with to use these numbers. So we will see how to use these numbers in Python. First we will see in this lecture we will see about integers, about floating point numbers and character sets. So first we will see integers. So integers, as you have already learned in mathematics, it will include zero, all of the positive whole numbers and all of the negative whole numbers. So integer literals in Python are written without commas. So there won't be any commas. You have earlier seen strings where, where you have seen uh, you can include these commas and all. But in integers, you cannot include these commas. And a leading negative sign indicates a negative value. So if you start, begin with a negative symbol, a minus symbol, then it means it's a negative integer. So the range of integers is infinite. So it, be, uh, it depends on the computer's memory. So in type usually contains this many number of integers can be represented in Python. So minus 2 raised to 31 to 2 raised to 31 minus 1. That is, this is a very huge number. So this many number of this can be represented in uh, your computer. So it basically depends on your computer memory. You can represent even infinite numbers like this if you, you can check whether by giving this uh, exponential to 100, you can see whether it can be represented in your computer and all. So this is an integer thing. So it, integers include all uh, zeros, all the positive numbers and all the negative numbers. And it should be written without commas. And if you are including a negative sign, it means uh, it indicates that it's a negative value. Okay. Then coming into the floating point numbers. So floating number point numbers are used to represent this real numbers. Real numbers means in mathematics, you know, all these uh, decimal values. If you want to represent this pi, it is 3.1416 like that, it will go on. So it will contain a decimal point, a whole number will be there, then a decimal point will be there, and there will be a fractional part in a floating point or real numbers. So real numbers also have infinite precision, which means that uh, digits in the fractional part can continue forever. So like the integer numbers, Real numbers also have infinite range based on your computer memory. Okay. So floating point numbers is used to represent these real numbers in Python. So typically the range will be minus 10 raised to 308 to 10 raised to 308. So this is a typical range of floating point numbers, float type numbers in uh, if it is a 16 digits precision number. Okay. It and have 16 digits of precision. So it can be written using either ordinary decimal notation or scientific notation. So real numbers can be represented in two ways using the decimal notation or using the scientific notation. We will see the examples. So these are some of the floating point numbers. So this is a decimal notation. Decimal notation means you ordinarily you will be writing 3.78 like that. In scientific notation, it is used to represent huge numbers. Huge floating point numbers can be represented using the scientific notation. So you have to simply specify 3.78 e raised to 0. The meaning is 3.78 into 10 raised to 0. So if you want to represent like this 0 0.00378, then it will be 3.78 e raised to minus 3. So this means 3.78 into 10 raised to minus 3. So this is a decimal notation thing and this is a scientific notation and the meaning is given like this. So floating point numbers can be either represented in the decimal notation format or if it's a very large floating point number, you can use to go for the scientific notation. So you can use this E, you can include this U, E. So that's all about floating point numbers. And the third part in this is about character sets. Thank okay. you. So we have already seen uh, strings. So character sets in Python, uh, in Python character literals uh, also look like string literals. Just you have seen string type. It, it looks similar to that string type also. But we have separate character sets in this thing. 
uh, in Python, we have different character sets also. So it can belong, we can, it can, characters can belong to several different character sets. Right? We can have ASCII set or the Unicode set. So ASCII set was earlier in when the computers began uh, operating in 1960s is ASCII character scheme. So it contains 128 characters in area when it was started it contained about 128 characters that is from zero it ranges from 0 to 127 and later on in mid 80s uh, around 256 different characters were included the special characters and everything was included uh, so the range was from 0 to 255 and then we started using other language characters also we have to go for some other set so it was the six this unicode set came in 1990s uh, unicode so it contains around 65,536 uh, different values for different characters in it. anyway we will see just uh, ascii character set so this is the uh, ascii character set which contains around uh, 128 characters so this is the one, uh, 128 characters so zero zero so you have to read like this zero represents nul so one zero one represents soh like that represents so if you want to see what the character a is it is actually six and five so 65 represents capital a then if you want to see a small letter a it, it is 97 so this is nine and this is seven so 97 so del it is the last character 127 so it starts from 0 to 127. So this is the ASCII character sets. Uh, this is the ASCII character set. Similarly, we have Unicode set and all. Okay. So for every character symbol, there is a particular value for that. ASCII value will be there. So character set, uh, we can you see the character, this ASCII value using the odd function. So odd function converts characters to their numeric ascii code so if you want to find what is the ascii code of a particular value you can use this or ord function odd function ordinal function okay odd function can be used uh, to rep to find the convert these characters to particular numeric ascii code so this is an example odd of uh, in single quotes a if you give that value will be 97 odd of capital a will be 65 so and if you want to convert, you see the reverse code. If you want to see what the particular uh, ASCII code represents, you can use the char function, char function. So char, C, uh, sorry, char function. So I have wrongly typed this, char function. char of 65 represents A, char of 66 represents B. Like this, we can find out. And if you, if this converts this ASCII code to characters, and if you can do operations on these functions also, we will see that example. Okay. So if you want to find out a particular ASCII uh, value of some character, you have to simply include the odd function. So odd function simply gives the ASCII code of that particular character. So B is ASCII is 66. If you want to find the particular uh, thing, if you want to find out what uh, this 69 represents what this 69 represents what is the character for this particular ASCII code you can use the CHR function you have to give so E is a uh, E's ASCII value is 69 and you can do this, this type of operations also CHR of odd of and if you want to see sorry if you want to A okay plus and if you want to move three characters further and see what is the character that represents so this means ordinal odd of a means it will be converted into that ascii uh, a particular ascii value it is a 97 plus 3 97 plus 3 means 100 so it will output what is the 100 uh, what 100 represents in ascii so if you print out it will be b so you know 97 is a 98 is small letter b 99 is small letter c and 100 is small letter d so you can use these functions odd and char functions chr functions okay so that's all about this topic i reference 
despite of, of Kenneth Lambert's book. Thank you.